20 kilogram rock is dropped a distance of one meter on the spring or, or onto the spring, a spring. Uh, the rock compresses the spring by two centimeters. What is the spring constant? Let's draw a picture. So we have a rock. And he's angry <laughs> because he's about to drop. And there's a spring located down here. Now I'll draw some loops in that spring. You get the idea. And that rock is going to descend. Here he comes. He's descending. And he's going to compress that spring. And just imagine that spring compresses. So think about that journey. What kind of energy does that rock start off with? All the way up here. It's GPE. And he's going to descend. And as he descends, he's falling, falling. Work is done on him. Oh, he's gaining speed. Uh oh. At that point, he will have kinetic energy. And then finally, he's going to compress the spring. Here he goes and come to a rest. And all of that energy is in the spring, it's all stowed there in the form of EPE. So we start off with GPE in the middle we have KE and then at last we have EPE and we know that what you lose in GPE would be equivalent to what you gain in KE and then what you lose in KE is what you end up with eventually in EPE so what you start off with GPE ultimately is what you end up with EPE and we don't even need the middleman we're only interested in the initial and the final condition so GPE lost eventually will be EPE gained so now we'll write the formulas. The formula for GPE is mg delta H and that's equivalent to one half K X squared. So the question is what is the spring constant? So again we'll do our smart tricks. We'll highlight this. I'll dupe it. Move it down and now I'll show you the manipulation of the equation we want to get k by itself, it's divided by 2 and multiplied by x squared. The opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. Cancel. The opposite of multiplying by x squared is dividing by x squared. Whatever you do on one, you do on the other. Cancel. And k will end up being 2 mg delta h divided by x squared. So if we look at this quickly, we know mg will be newtons, h will be meters, and then x squared will be meters squared. So we end up with meters canceling one of the squares. We get newtons per meter. Oh, and we're happy because we I have the correct units for our equation, so we ended up manipulating it correctly, so we can highlight these, shake it, and I'll just hit delete, and they go away. I'm happy with the units, we don't need them anymore. We'll sub in K, K will be equal to 2 times what the mass is, 20 kgs, times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times h, oh how far did it fall? Be careful, be careful, we don't want to mix the compression up, that's x with the distance that falls h, h is 1 meter, divided by the square of the compression. Now be careful, the compression is in centimeters. Two centimeters are 0 0.02 meters. So we end up with 0 0.02 meters 
quantity squared. We know the units. We looked at the units a moment ago. So we can we know they're going to work out. But if we do the math, 2 times 20 times 10 times 1 divided by 0 0.02 will give us a spring constant. That's extraordinary. It's 980,000. That's incredible. Newtons per meter. That means to compress that spring would require 980,000 newtons of force. Wow. That's a lot of force. That's probably why the spring did not compress very far. Tough spring.